All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo ThinkPad E15. All right, so first we're going to close this up. This laptop's going really slow. Whoa, I just noticed there's a big dent here. Um, but anyways, um, this laptop is running really, really slow. Uh, so what I did was I cloned the hard drive to a M.2 SSD. Um, we're going to see if we can swap this in all right we're just undoing all these screws they're ph1 or js1 screws looks like they actually stay attached to the case all right so let's see are all of them gonna stand yep looks like it all right anyways if this video helps you out make sure to like subscribe share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well if it helps you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living Right, anyways, as you can see, these screws are actually staying in the case itself, so you don't have to physically remove them. <clears throat> all right, let's see, how can we separate these layers? I'm going to guess we go in this little gap here, all right? Probably going to be easier if I flip it the other way. Okay, so I'm going to get my fingernails in there, and then I'm going to push with my thumb on the bottom, and here you can see we can pop these clips out, all right? You can use uh, plastic pry tools if you want, but as you can see, my fingernails work really well, and I always have these tools on hand, <laughs> on hand. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and get these out. All right, just continue working our way over. All right, we're gonna go over to the other side, same thing. Just continue working our way over, just like that. All right, this one corner, there we go. All right, so now we got all the sides on the front out, but let's see how we're gonna get the back out. Is it gonna just pop out easily or is it gonna be a pain? All right, so this is this screw still stuck in there or something? It's like there's a clip stuck in the middle because everything lifted up except for that. All right, we're gonna lift this side, I guess. So you can see, oh, there's like clips in the middle or something. Okay, there we go. That came off and here you can see it's all um, all the screws stay in place, so they're actually all still in there. Okay, there's actually a slot here for an M.2 SSD. Hopefully it supports PCIe NVMe. I'm going to test that real quick, so we're going to flip this latch here. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in here for you guys. So there's this little latch here, sorry. So I just flipped that up, and then we're going to pull this cable out. So I'm going to try and get underneath this little blue tab if I can. I guess not. All right, anyways, I guess we'll just pull the whole connector out like that. Flip that back down since we don't need it. Let's go ahead and take this screw out. And we're going to see if a PCIe NVMe SSD works in here. I cloned this hard drive directly to this SSD. So if it works, it should just boot up directly from here. Oh, there's like broken plastic bits in here. All right, so if this works, then this should be really good. Um, this cable somewhat in the way. So move that out. All right, let's go ahead and get this screw in. All right, and there we go. All right, let's go ahead and power this up. If you're wondering, there's um, some RAM here, so you can pull these two tabs to the side. Sorry if my head got in the way. Then you can pull this out. There's only one stick, apparently. Um, PC4, 2666V, 8 gig stick. Um, CPU is soldered to the motherboard. A lot of people ask if they can upgrade the CPU. No, you cannot. Um, you also got the battery here. Model number L17M3P52. Okay, um, LCD LVDS connectors here. If you mess with this, even if you're just gonna flip this latch up, you really want to disconnect the battery first before doing that, and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. All right, here you have this IO board cable for the USB port and the, I don't know what else is there other than the wireless, not the wireless, what do you call that? Um, the ethernet port, sorry. Um, yeah, I think that's all that's there. So that one cable's for that. And there's this JFP. So I guess if there's a fingerprint sensor, sometimes it'll use that. Wireless card is right there. And fan connector right there. It looks like the fan is attached to the um, heat sink. So if you want to remove the fan, um, you likely have to either take the whole heat sink assembly out or take the motherboard out so you can flip the board over and access the screws on the other side or if there's melted plastic in some cases. All right, you got the 
Oh, I should zoom out here. Everything is too much. Okay, you got the speaker connector here with the cable running along to the other speaker on the other side. And then I'm pretty sure this is the BIOS, CMOS, or RTC real-time clock battery connector there. All right. If you want to remove the battery, there's uh, one screw here and one screw here. It kind of goes up at an angle like that, and then you can slide it out. As you can see down here, there, the little feet are kind of caught underneath these extended plastic pieces. And this battery, you kind of just have to wiggle and pull this connector out that way. All right, This metal piece is part of the motherboard, so you want to be very careful that when you pull this, you're pulling it straight this way, not lifting it up. All right, anyways, let's see if it's going to boot from the SSD. I disconnected the original hard drive, and the SSD is right there. So let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm going to just press the power button and see if it's going to boot. It might show the user login, so I might have to block this. But anyways, let's see. Is it going to boot my SSD? Yep, it's booting. All right, I see the thing spinning around. So let me hold this out of view for real quick, just in case. All right, I'm probably going to have to restart the computer one time. Usually that's the case. Um, so we'll let this continue going, and we'll see what happens. All right. It's actually taking a while to boot, so maybe it's not going to boot, but we'll find out. Okay. Okay, I don't know why it's taking so long. Oh, there we go. We ended up with a blue screen, so that clone didn't work right. Um, let's try something real quick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Control delete, we'll restart. Oops. We're gonna press enter and we're gonna try and change the boot device. Okay, so I press enter, it goes to this. I'm gonna press F12 to go to the boot menu. Um, does it see? Okay, it does see the NVMe and Windows Boot Manager here. I don't know if that's reading the actual Windows Boot Manager from the NVMe, so it could be it's trying to read the, the boot manager from the old uh, hard drive. Maybe that's why it's not working, but we'll see. Um, right now it's not showing the Lenovo logo, but it's spinning that. So we'll see what happens. Um, I think the issue might be because they had Windows 11 on it and it didn't want to clone right. So I don't know. Hopefully it will work because otherwise I'm going to have to find another way to clone the hard drive or SSD over. Okay, so we'll give this a bit. Um, I'll probably pause the video so you don't have to keep waiting and watching this spinning circle. Or I don't know, maybe I'll just leave it on. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to fast forward through. Uh-oh, see, it just blue screens and says inaccessible boot device. So I think I am going to have to clone it the other way. Um, let's wait for this. I'm going to try selecting the NVMe first. So let's try and press enter again on boot. Okay, F12. And let's try now, instead of picking the um, the okay. Windows Boot Manager, I'm going to actually pick the NVMe option and see if that does anything. I doubt it. It's doing an automatic repair. I don't know what it's repairing. Um, but it looks like maybe we can't clone the hard drive that way. So I'm going to try another software and see if I can do it. Hopefully it will work. If it doesn't, I don't know. Um, I'll have to see what the customer wants to do. Um, but yeah. All right, I'll let this go a bit more. Oh, it's doing something, diagnosing PC. Let's see if that's gonna actually work or not. Okay, it's still going. Okay, so it just went to automatic repair. Let's see advanced options. I don't think that's going to do anything. I'm going to go to the troubleshoot options, advanced, startup settings. Let's see if it'll even boot to safe mode. So I'm going to go to the start startup settings. And let's see if it'll even give me the options. Okay, we're going to push number four to go into safe mode and see if it boots. If it boots into safe mode, usually we can do a restart one time and that will get it to boot, but uh, I don't see anything happening here. Usually if it's working, that thing should spin. Is it working? It just shut off. <laughs> oh, it actually worked. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in the power button menu and click restart. And let's see if it will boot to the regular uh, way without doing anything. Oops, now I showed you guys the username, but... 
All right, let's go ahead and let this go. Let's see if it's actually gonna boot this time or if it's still broken. All right. It's trying to boot, let's see. I'll be surprised if it only works in safe mode. That would be kind of weird. Oh, that sounds good. All right, so I think we're good to go. We just had to load it into safe mode. Um, and yeah, that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and close this thing up. After loading in safe mode one time and then restarting the computer, that fixed the boot. I'm gonna close this up. Okay, and I don't know what the customer wants to do. I think I'll actually leave the spinning drive in here just so we don't have to worry about it. This can be like a backup in case something happens with the SSD, we could always plug it back in and then access it. This bottom cover is easy enough to remove. So if they did for some reason want me to take it back out later, then I can always go from there. Anyways, to put this cover on, you go at an angle from the bottom, okay? So that way the little clips can get um, connected. All right, actually, I don't think that worked. Okay, anyways, I guess we can just click it in normally, just like that. Okay, and do that. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and tighten this. All right, and tighten this, tighten this. And then we basically just have to double check that everything is clipped into place. All right, anyways, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, we're just going to put back the screws, make sure everything is clipped into place, and we're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Last one. All right, let's take a look here and see. All right, everything looks good. Everything is lined up. Everything looks clipped into place. Oh, this corner is not. So let's go ahead and open this up. And we're just going to click that. Is that not going to click into place? Is this the broken side? Oh, there we go. Okay, so we got that all clicked in. Everything else looks good. All right, and we should be good to go. Let me double check if this screw is tightened all the way since it didn't really snap in until the last second. All right, it's good. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.